The fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Oh, Silver. Oh! Fired from all sides on the cluster of log cabins in the little settlement, but the pioneers had not been caught unprepared. Keep fire! Pour it on them! We'll show them critters! Here's another gun, Jim. Keep that kids down below the window! The settlers had taken refuge in the sturdiest of their buildings. Men fired through narrow slits in the logs, while the women and children reloaded weapons and passed them to the marksmen. The Indians had closed in and had been driven back. Again, they tried to storm the buildings to get within range of fire arrows. And again, they'd been driven back. Hey, boys, look! They're clearing out. Hey, they're right off. Hold your fire. We will lick them. They're hot, Sure enough, heading for the hill. We showed them redskins. We licked them. Was anyone killed? I don't think so, Jim. A few of the men were wounded, son, but I don't think anyone's hurt serious. Pete's hurt the worst. He's got an arrow clean through the shoulder. Where's Jean? Is she all right? Right over there, Jim. She's just finishing a bandage on Pete's shoulder. Uh, Jean, are you all right? Yes, Jim. Gosh, that was a narrow escape. Those ornery redskins, we'd ought to lick them for keeps. I guess we showed them we could take care of ourselves, Fred. Yeah, but they're likely to come back. Maybe the next time they'll take us by surprise. I say we ought to go after them and whip them for keeps. No, no, Fred. Yeah, Fred. Sit well enough alone. I think Fred's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. What do you say, Jim? Well, uh, maybe you're right. Boys, we're riding after those oh, yeah, that's right, Jim. Jim, what are you talking about? I mean, we've got to lick them for keeps. But I don't want you to. It'll be a lot different if you're trying to fight those Indians out in the open. You better listen to what your wife says, son. Those redskins have got to be licked, I tell you. Of course, if you don't want to do your part, Jim, it's all right with us. We'll go without you, won't we, boy? Fred Munson, it's not a case of doing his part. I think Jim's already done his part and so have the rest of you. It's one thing to defend the settlement, but it's quite different to go out and chase those Indians. Maybe we should let Jim's wife be boss of the settlement from now on, huh, boys? That'll do, Fred. No more of that talk. Look out the window. Hey, look out there. Here comes the horseman. Let me get a shot at him. Hold on, Fred. It's not a redskin. Looks like he's riding up this way with some sort of message. Or maybe he's been chased. He's riding awfully fast. Just look at that horse travel. Gosh, what a horse. I declare... Is that a mask on his face? It sure is. He must be an outlaw. I'll drill the critter. Put that gun down, Fred. Beautiful horse. 
What about it, Jim? Should I unbar the door? Yeah, we we'll see what he wants. I don't believe in taking chances with strangers. He's not likely to start trouble in here. There's a dozen men with guns. Open the door, Hank. Right. Walking right up as if he belonged here. You can come in, mister. But keep your hands shoulder high. You didn't worry about my hands. What does that mask mean, mister? Are you dodging the law? Oh. No. And why do you wear a mask? And what do you want here? Were many of you hurt by the Indians? We got a few wounded. Maybe you didn't know it, but you certainly invited that attack. What do you mean, we invited it? One of you settlers caused that attack. A short, heavy man with a black beard. Do you mean Fred Munson? You there. You answer that description. Me? What are you talking about? How did Fred cause the attack? You've been prospecting on the east slope of Eagle Mountain. Well? You camped in a valley about halfway up. The Indians call it the Valley of the Great Spirit. That's so? There's a large rock balanced just above the entrance to the valley. Uh-huh, I recollect it. What of it? How long has this settlement been here? We come here eight months ago. Why? Eight months? And perhaps you're not to blame. Maybe you didn't realize that that valley has always been sacred to the red men. To them, the rock at its entrance represents the Great Spirit. It's sacrilege for an Indian to set foot in that valley... It's worse for a white man to do so. Are you trying to tell us a way to stay out of that valley? Yes, that's what prompted this attack. They raided us because I made camp in a valley that don't even belong to them? May sound unreasonable to you, but it wouldn't if you understood Indians. You want to know something, stranger? Well? I think you're a liar, Fred. You are ignorant. I came here merely to help you after I'd been told by a friend what the Indians were going to do. Now you know the situation. What you do is your own responsibility. Yeah? Well, mister, I know the real reason for you coming, and you've wasted your time. Perhaps I have wasted my time. Wait, stranger. Let him go. Fred, why did you have to talk to him like that? That man simply wanted to help us. Help us nothing. Call him that man a liar. By thunder, if I'd have been him, I'd have punched you for shooting off your mouth like that. Come on. So I was shooting off my mouth, was I? All right, folks, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you why he don't want me prospecting in that valley. There's gold in that valley. Gold? gold. gold. Honest? Did you find gold there, Fred? You bet I did. What's that got to do with a masked man's warning? He wants that gold for himself. Taking us for greenhorns, he gave us that story about Indians, figuring we'd swallow it. Indians? Ha! I'm betting there wasn't a word of truth in what he said. Say, maybe Fred's right. He was masked. He must have been a crook. And if there's gold in that valley and he knows about it, he'd want to keep us out. But why did the Indians attack? Maybe they attacked from plain orneriness. I'll tell you what I think of that masked man's warning. Just this. I'm going back to the valley. I'm getting my share of that gold. And anybody that wants to come along, he'll get his share, too. What do you say? Oh, oh. Say, that beats farming all to pieces. Jim, I... I wish you wouldn't go. Oh, Gene, I can't stay home while everyone else gets rich. I, I believe that, masked man. I reckon it'd be easy for a girl to believe a tall, strong-looking critter like that. I've got to go, Gene. Why, maybe I can get rich enough to, to take us back east where we can live in a big house like millionaires. But I don't want to go back east, Jim. And I don't want a big house. I just want you. If anything happened to you... Oh, I... nothing will happen. You let your husband come with me, and I'll send him back rich. Huh. Bit for the gold bug. Mention gold to a pack of men, and they clean lose what sense they ever had. Maybe this masked man was an outlaw. But I say it's plain foolish to go again his warning. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger had ridden to join Tonto in a small camp. Oh, Silver. Oh, easy. Steady, big fellow. You take message to settlement, Kimasabi? Yes, Tonto. I don't think they believe me. The fellow we heard about is named Fred. He called me a liar. Ah. Then settler go back to Valley, huh? They probably will. Ah, it's their own fault if Indian make more trouble. We can't leave it at that, Tonto. Not when there are women and children who will suffer. Ah. What we do? We we'll ride to Red Wolf's village. Well, him on warpath. He's never been a particular enemy of the white people. Well, him make war now. Yes, because pioneers entered the valley. Perhaps we can make him see that they don't realize what they've done. 
While we're there, we'll let the Indian chief know that trouble in the district might bring army troops. Mm, maybe him listen. Where's his village? We take trail over hill. And come on, Tonto. We'll start right away. He's a steady big fellow. Uh, get him up, scout. Come on, Tonto. Uh. While the masked man and Tonto headed for the Indian village, the pioneers made plans for an expedition to the Valley of the Great Spirit. The men were busy in their respective homes packing provisions for the trip. Jim Gunning was as enthused as any of them. His wife and mother helped him pack, but they did not share his enthusiasm. Jim, are you really set to make this trip? Won't you change your mind? Ah, Gene, don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. No use arguing with him, Gene. He's just like his pa was. The more he's in the wrong, the stubborner he gets. Just leave him be and come here and help me with these bills. All right, I'll help. I don't see why you're so dead set against the trip, huh? You know why as well as I do. Even so, I wouldn't say so much if it was anybody but Fred Munson putting you up to it. What have you got against Fred? He's no good. I can see it in his eyes. Ah, and don't tell me that's foolishness either, because I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you're the limit, Ma. You don't like his eyes. <laughs> Jim. Jim, you ought to pay more attention to what your mother thinks. I'll answer the door. Howdy. Oh, it's you, eh, Fred? Hello, Hank. Evening, Mrs. Gunning. Howdy, Fred. Hello, Hank. Come on in. Me and Hank are checking to see for sure who's starting with us tomorrow morning. We can count on you, can't we, Jim? You sure can. Fine. Glad to hear it. Munson, you men are just acting like a bunch of dead ratty digits. What did we come with for? To hunt for gold? Oh, we did not. We come here because there was free land to be had. But now you've gone and got everybody stirred up. Shucks, ma'am. Don't nobody have to come along that don't want it. Mm, just try to keep a gold-bitten man at home. <laughs> don't you let more bother you, Fred. She's never as mad as she sounds. How do you know how mad I am? <laughs> well, I... <laughs> we won't stay to start a fight. Remember, Jim, we started sunup. Come along, Hank. I'll be ready. Good night. Oh, See you at sunup. Go, Jim. Jim, I wish you'd listen to reason. Well, Hank, check the everyone. They're all coming. Gosh, Fred, why wouldn't they with gold to be had? Uh -huh. There's gold, all right. I They'll guess. find it, too, Hank. But maybe they won't keep it. Huh? What's that, Fred? What do you mean? <laughs> maybe after they've helped find it, something will happen so it'll all belong to us. I, I don't savvy. <laughs> you will, Hank, you will. But if you repeat what I just said... You'll regret it. It was night when the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the Indian village of Red Wolf. They reined up outside the circle of light cast by the campfire and looked upon a strange scene. A medicine man outlined by the flames stood erect in the center of the village. Around him was gathered the entire tribe. What is it, Tom? Medicine man, make prayer. You understand them? Ah, and pray to Great Spirit. You see, and tell Great Spirit it not thought of red men that pale face go in valley. Anything else? Ah, and tell Great Spirit. Then capture Pale Face for sacrifice. A sacrifice? Uh -huh. It's a bad time for us to enter the village, Toto. Uh, plenty bad. We have no choice. Come on. Come on, sir. Come, Scout. Come, Father. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Yeah. 
to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto found Red Wolf's tribe gathered to chant a prayer to the Great Spirit. At the sudden appearance of the masked man, the chant ceased abruptly. Then there were threatening shouts. Oh, Silver, oh, 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 Makut Levi Sola. Koma. Makut. What does he say, Taro? Him got son who speak to us. Him name Young Wolf. Huh? Young Wolf, become us friends. White men not friend my people. I am friend. But I have ridden into your village without protection if I were an enemy. You speak straight tongue, my people not harm you. Why you come here? Speak. Your warriors attack white man's settlement. Huh? That's so? You attacked because man entered the valley of the great spirit. Is it just that all white men are to be punished for the guilt of one? What one man do, other do. My father, proud chief, him angry. You must make chief see wisdom. There must be no more war. My father not want war. There be peace. Lest white man once more enter valley great spirit. You carry word. Thank you, young wolf. We'll try to preserve the peace by keeping the white man from your sacred valley. Ah, that's good. You go now. Go, Pilanto. Lock to. Lock to. Oh, my nickte. Lock to. My nickte. Lock to. My nickte. Come on, Tonto. Now it's up to us to keep the settlers in the valley. He's just sitting here. Get him up. Small to. Ranger and Tonto camped that night, feeling their work had been well done. The following morning, they started on the all-day ride that would take them to the settlement so they could once more warn the pioneers. But on that same morning, Fred Munson had led a dozen men through the narrow opening and beneath the balanced rock to the sacred Indian Valley of the Great Spirit. The men were pleased to note that Fred had spoken the truth. They found traces of gold in several of the streams and spent the day panning for the precious dust. was evening when Fred Munson moved over to the side of his pal. Ah, uh, Fred, something on your mind? Yeah, Hank. Remember what I said to you last night? About these fellas helping us find the gold but not keeping it? Yeah, I remember you speaking about it. Are you with me on my plan? Well, I... Or have I got to arrange an accident so you won't be able to talk? Oh, no, no, Fred. I, I'm with you. I... That is, you, you can count on me. You won't turn squeamish, will you? I said I'm with you. All right, then. Jim Gunning has found a pocket. You mean he struck the real pay dirt? Yeah, that's what I expected would happen once we got a lot of men in here. Gosh, that beats panning out a few grains at a time. Sure it does. And it calls for using the blasting powder I brought. That's a good idea. It'll save a lot of digging. I don't mean to use the blasting powder that way. No? Look over yonder where the sides of the valley narrow down to a couple of cliffs. You see that big rock that's balanced right above the gap? Yeah, I've looked at it a dozen times. I was just about ready to topple over. Don't let looks fool you. That rock's there to stay. If something don't happen to it. Like a bad storm, you mean? <laughs> or a charge of blasting powder. Blasting powder? But what? Now wait. You're in this with me, Savvy. Gosh, Fred, we're pods, ain't we? That's what I've been banking on. How would you like to have all the gold to split between the two of us? Steal it, you mean? Sure. You, you got a way to do it? Well, Hank, I figure I'll tell the others to start on ahead. And when they get to the mouth of the valley, that rock above there will drop on them. But how do you arrange that? <laughs> I mentioned I had blasting powder, didn't I? Yeah. You mean you're figuring to plant that powder again the rock and set it off? Just so. But, Fred, that'd be murder. A fortune in gold is worth having, isn't it? I'd do almost anything, yes. We've always been pods, you know we have. But to kill... To kill without giving them a chance... You won't do it? Uh, I can't. Hank, you listen to me. Well, There's I not a chance you. of you or anybody else getting in my way. 
You're welcome to share if you help. If you don't help, you won't share. And if you open your mouth or do just one thing to spoil my scheme, I'll fix you if I have to hang for it. At the settlement, the Lone Ranger and Tonto learned to their dismay that all the able-bodied men had gone to find gold in the Valley of the Great Spirit. Knowing this meant a war of extermination if Red Wolf's tribe knew what had happened, the masked man set a furious pace with a mighty stallion silver. One silver! With Tonto following on Scout, the Lone Ranger maintained a steady pace through sunset and twilight and kept on toward the Valley of the Great Spirit at the same pace, even though darkness added to the risk of such tremendous speed. In the valley, the men slept with their dreams of fabulous wealth. They had found their objective and planned to start for the settlement at daybreak. Fred Munson thought he was the only man awake. He crawled up the side of the valley, then made his way to the overhanging rock where he spent some time rigging an arrangement of strings and blasting powder. When he left, another man moved through the darkness. I can't let him do it. But he'll kill me if I tell the men. Maybe I can change the powder. Stay where you are. <laughs> Who is it? I saw you when I was in the settlement. The masked man. What are you up to? Uh, now, wait a minute, mister. When we approached this valley, we saw someone working close to that rock. He was outlined against the sky. Was it you? No. No, it wasn't me. Who was it? Uh, now, look here, mister. Jim Gunning liked your style. So did his wife. So did his ma. Yes? I guess I do, too. I've got to have help. Well, maybe I can give it to you. The following morning, the men from the settlement were ready to start from the valley... Fred Munson pretended that he had trouble with the saddle strap. Fred, what in tarnation's the matter? We're all packed to go and you're not even saddled. I'll be ready in a little while, Jim. You boys go on ahead. You uh, need some help? Hank will help me. Won't you, Hank? Yeah, yeah, sure thing, Fred. Go on, boys. We'll catch up all right. Well, if you fellas don't mind. Are the rest of you ready to go? Yeah. Then we'll ride on ahead and you boys come as soon as you can. Sure, sure. We'll be along. Come on, fellas. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Still figure on going through with it, Fred? You bet I do. And when you see how easy it was, you'll be sorry you didn't help me. Keep your mouth shut and maybe I'll cut you in after all. But uh, how did you work it so the blast would go off at just the right time? <laughs> easy. I got the powder all set and I tied a six gun next to the blasting powder. I tied fish line to the trigger and ran it down the side of the wall to a forked stick. And stretched across the opening a couple of inches off the ground. That's pretty smart. The first horse going out of this valley will fire the blast. Every one of those men will be killed. I'm sure they will. They will report it as an accident. If worse comes to worst, we can blame it on the Indians. Or that masked man. Uh, Fred, look. Well, great day. That's the masked man. He's coming here. He's coming right for us. I'll fix him. Fred, don't shoot. <laughs> Confounded, Hank. Watch oh, knock my arm up. I want you. Now, see here. Give you. me that gun. Hank, Hank, do something. Come with me. Let me go. Let me go, I tell you. Hank, you go along and bring Fred's horse. Uh, He's riding on silver uh, with me. Right. Hank, are you in on this masked man's work? If you told him I... Confounded, let me go. Not just yet. Up you go. Let me go. Easy, silver. Uh, the more you uh, squirm, the tighter I'll hold you. Uh, One silver. Fred Munson was helpless in the strong grip of the Lone Ranger, which held him across the back of Silver. The great horse raced ahead through the valley and quickly overtook the rest of the men from the settlement. The masked man went ahead amid shouts of surprise, then reined up where the valley narrowed down to a gap beneath the overhanging rock. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, steady. Now you can get out, Munson. Boys, boys, help me get this masked man. I'm not holding you any longer. Go on, leave this valley. Walk ahead. No. No. Hey, what's going on, anyhow? Why'd you bring Fred here? Go on, Munson. Walk straight ahead. No. 
No, don't make me do that. What are you afraid of? My thunder, Fred is afraid of something. What's the matter with you, Fred? What's got into you? Yeah. I'll tell you what's the matter with him. He's fixed blasting powder to drop that rock on all of you when you go out of the valley. What's what? blasting powder? The blast will be fired when anybody touches a string that's stretched above the ground. All right. How about that, Fred? So you schemed to kill us all off as soon as the gold had been located, eh? No, no. Hank will confirm what I've told you. He'll show you where the blast is planted. You'll find Munson's own gun fixed to set it off. And if we'd gone another 50 feet, we'd have been caught by that rock. Otto was waiting to stop you if you'd gone too close. All right now, Toto. Uh, an Indian. Have you been over behind them shrubs all this time? Yes, to stop you in case I was delayed. Well, boys, I suggest we put some ropes on Munson. No, oh, don't. We're taking you back as a prisoner, Munson. If we find that the masked man's given us the true facts, by thunder, you're going to hang. How about it, boys? No, no, you can't do that. Our time. I won't be taken. You won't get me out. Hey, Come here. back. Him go to gap. Come back here. Look out. Look out. Here comes a rock. Jim, it's a miracle that you came back alive. If you ask me, I say it's a miracle any of the men got back alive. Was anyone besides Munson hurt? A couple of the men were bruised by the small rocks that fell down after the big one, but nothing serious. What about the Redskins? I meant to tell you, Ma. They came, a whole lot of them. They learned that we were in the valley and they were ready to kill every one of us. Oh, dear. That masked man and his engine friend saved our necks a second time. They talked to the chief and his son. They showed them that Fred Munson had been killed by the falling rock. Then he made them think that the spirits had taken revenge into their own hands. So the Indians agreed to let it go at that. You say that masked man made the Indians think the spirits had punished Fred Munson. Yeah. I wonder... I wonder if perhaps that isn't partly true. In any case, that gold can stay in the Valley of the Great Spirit for all of me. And that goes for all the rest of the men. We're here to farm and we'll farm. Unless the Lone Ranger tells us different. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>